So last few classes we have discussed about the drawing of SFD and BMD that is the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. So if you are clear about the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram, we can start this new chapter. Because if you don't know the last class or last chapter basic, you cannot do well on this chapter because in this chapter you need the SFD and BMD diagram to continue this stress calculation. So in this chapter we will be discussing the stresses in beam okay so you must need the last class basic so flexural stress you might heard the name of axial stress, stress right so what is flexural stress so by the name we can see that due to the flexor if there is some stress that we will call the flexural stress now question is what is yes, flexor or what is flexural situation of a member does anybody have any idea no sir so we call it the bending stress flexural stress another name is bending stress okay so flexor means bending it raises the bending so how much resist in terms of bending that we call the flexor so force and couple acting on a beam on the beam cause bending we know either it is a force or either it is a couple it generates the bending so what is the difference between force and couple regarding the couple I discussed in the very beginning right if the two forces are acting opposite in directions and it if it is producing the same amount of moment either if you take moment here or either you take moment here or you take moment here so both the moment are same but opposite in direction so that time you call this is what coupling force and sharing is okay. on any cross section of the beam and deflection perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam so what they are saying if you consider a force on a particular beam right with respect to its cross section right with respect to its cross section this is the shear force right but it produces the bending it produces the bending if you draw the SFD and BMD due to this force you will have the bending force so this force uh, generate some stresses so that stress we call the flexural stress do you understand so this force is generating the shear force with respect to this cross section but due to this force it might bend like this or it may deflect like this so that is the amount of deflection we call if you consider this particular point deflection this is the amount of deflection we call if we have this is reaction is like that okay do you understand the literature now so if couples are applied to the end of the beam and no force act on it the bending is said to be pure bending so instead of this kind of force if we have this kind of couple force right so and due to this kind of coupling force what are the bending moment will get it that is we call the pure bending if the force produce the bending the bending is called ordinary bending so here you can see this is a p amount of force so that time you call it this kind of bending is the ordinary bending if there is a couple that is we call the pure bending okay <clears throat> this is a simple uh, definition here you can see we will try to make the relationship with the flexural stress now you understand what is flexural stress if you apply load there will be a bending movement right do you understand or not that will be yes. bending moment. Right? So, due to this bending moment, if you consider this is a cross section, in this cross section, there will be some stress with respect to the area, right? <clears throat> so, what is the stress it will develop? That is, we will call flexural stress. So, sometimes we denote it by FB. Okay? Or some people will denote by sigma f okay you'll find different kinds of denotation so we want to make the relationship between the flexural stress and the bending moment so based on the bending moment how much flexural stress develop this kind of relationship we want to develop do you understand so what is this we want to take the relationship or develop the relationship between the m and the 
like the running stress. Yes, yes sir. M is the bending moment <laughs> and FB is the flexural stress. So to develop this equation or to develop this relationship, we need to consider some assumption. So what are these assumptions? The plane section of the beam remain plane. Suppose here you can see there is a section. So this section remain plane even after I apply the load. This section is remain rectangular, right? So it will be remain rectangular and in the similar plane there will be no change in the section if it's bend even you understand so that is the first assumption then second assumption the materials in the beam is homogeneous materials is homogeneous suppose if it is a wood throughout the member it is wood suppose this one we are talking about right so this member is wood okay from all the portion of this materials is wood if it's a concrete so it's only concrete no other materials. Do you understand? Homogeneous. And obey hooks law. Obey hooks law means what? A stress is proportional to the what? A strain. You remember from the chapter 2. Okay. It obeys hooks law. So this is the condition 2. Third condition the module of elasticity for tension and compression are equal. What does it mean? If you consider here, if you look into this one, so due to this, you will find this portion will be in tension right yes sir this portion will be in tension but this portion will be in compression top of the beam right so that means what 50 percent of this beam this should be in compression and this portion will be in tension so this compression and tension force would be equal do you understand so technically if i explain it more keep in mind here you need to understand these informations carefully if you consider this is the neutral axis right this is the neutral axis where compression and tension equals to zero okay so in this top fiber what is the compressional force you have here suppose this is 10 in the this top fiber what will be the tension force who can tell me Same, sir. Same. How Ten. much? 10. Very good. You understand? So, that is they consider that modulus of elasticity are same for compression and tension. So, modulus of elasticity means what? E. Right? So, this yes, is sir. sigma by epsilon E. Do you understand? So, if you consider E and epsilon E is similar, so you'll get the stress either compression or tension. Doesn't matter. Because compression e and tension e are same because it maintains the hooks law sigma is proportional to the strain so it maintains the elastic point right so in elastic point it returns in case of tension in case of compression it release so <coughs> materials still in the elastic point or elastic range there so we consider Modulus of elasticity of compression C and modulus of elasticity of compression T are equal. So, indirectly, in this one, above the neutral axis, if you go in the top fiber, what is the amount of compression you will get? If you go the same distance from the neutral axis in the tension zone, same amount tension you will calculate. So, that's why, in either way, if you just calculate the tensional stress on this top of the neutral axis, you will get the same amount of value in just an opposite direction do you understand so that is the yes, information of this assumption three the module of elasticity for tension and compression are equal the beam is initially straight and of constant cross section so usually the beam we consider this is a straight and constant cross section wherever you take the section the cross sectional area a would be same do you understand so what does it mean the width and the depth d are same you understand yes sir the beam is initially okay the plane of loading must contain a principal axis of beam cross sections and load must be perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam so i will look in this assumption in this consideration of the flexural stress fb and the bending moment m in this relationship we must consider this kind of loading 
which is which is perpendicular with respect to the principal axis if you consider this is the principal axis right this is the longitudinal axis for this beam and which is perpendicular with respect to this axis sir, flexural fb sir uh, flexural stress this is the sir i don't understand sir okay flexural stress what is flexural stress you do not understand that is yes sir yes sir okay so if you apply load here it will generate some flexor so flexor means bending so due to this bending moment what is the stress will be developed on this cross section that is called the flexor stress yes sir so what, what i was discussing this one okay so the load must be perpendicular with respect to the longitudinal axis or the principal axis okay so which develop the flexor which develop the bending okay so this is the assumption yes, sir. these are the assumptions so now we'll try to develop the relationship between the flexural stress and the moment okay so suppose you consider a beam can you see the beam and you are having a load so this load is actually acting like this it has a center point so if you consider this is the amount of load right okay so consider fiber at distance y so suppose this beam is having loaded uh, loaded by this concentrated load right or distributed load for a certain period sorry certain length then you consider the cross section of this beam suppose this is the cross section of this beam right if you take this so this is the deflected shape after the deflection the beam will be uh, this is the deflection line so the neutral axis of the beam would be look like that okay so here we know this situation below the beam it would be comp uh, tension and above the beam it would be compression due to this action this kind of loading right are yes, you getting sir. the concept yes sir okay so if you take the cross section if you amplify this one it will look like that and it is in little bit bending uh, deflected mode okay so this is the cross section suppose so we know this portion is in having compression this portion is having tension right okay so what happened we consider that neutral axis will not change it would be in same length right so this will not change so due to the application of load it it face the tension so if it's facing the tension what will what will be the scenario it might elongate a little bit right yes sir and it might compress a little bit it might reduce its length a little bit okay so that's why you are considering this neutral axis here we consider this point b so now you are considering the y distance from the neutral axis suppose this is the neutral axis and you are selecting the fibers so in the beam there are so many fibers you can consider this one these one it's just you up to you you consider these are the fiber distance so they consider the fiber distance of y maybe this fiber they consider and this distance from the neutral axis is y okay If, if, I, if, if I select this distance, this is the fiber distance, that would be h by 2. Why? If you consider total is h, if you consider total is h from the neutral axis to this utmost fiber distance would be h by 2. Okay. So, consider a fiber distance y from the neutral axis. So, now do you understand? So, after y, x, y distance, they consider fiber which is d. So, because of beam curvature as effect of the bending moment, the fiber is stressed by an amount of CD. So what happened? Initially, if I make it amplified, can you see? This portion is extended portion. Okay. So maybe due to the stress, due to the tension, Due to the stress or due to the tension, the fiber extend here, right? Because the bottom 
uh, below the neutral axis it is feeling tension so if it is feeling tension it will be stressed or it will elongate little bit so they are considering at y distance this is the amount of stressed or this is the amount of elongation okay hello yes sir okay sir okay suppose this value was c it elongates at point d this way so the effect of bending moment okay sorry so since the curvature of beam is very small so we can see this is a curvature right so deflection of beam is small even and from this small event we just consider this small segment can you see we just consider this is small segment so which is very small even right so this is curvature we ignore we consider this is a straight line so that time you get different triangles okay yes, sir. so now e since this is very small we consider b c d as a triangle right so we consider b c d as a triangle then o b a so that is the capital o that is the origin of this curvature so i think you have the basic geometry this is the origin of the curvature so o b a so o b a so this is another okay this is another triangle so these two are considered similar triangle why these two are considered similar triangle because you can see o b and b d these are in a same line of action right the slope and everything is similar so what is the formula of strain del by l do you remember yes sir okay if del by l is the formula of strain so what is the del here if we consider this is the length so cd is the del hello if you consider yes, this portion yes sir this portion of the neutral axis so this is the original length this is the neutral axis length right so due to the elongation it change from c to d if it is straight maybe it, it could have looked like this this is the uh, this is the point of b and this is the point of c right so since it's bent it look like that do you understand that means what c was exactly in the b point but it is stressed and now it's it look like that d so this portion is stressed because this portion elongates do you understand yes, so that sir. means this portion cd is the elongation so instead of del can i change uh, can i change this del into cd yes sir this is the change and this is the del right what is the basic definition of strain if you apply load how much it change that is your del right this is the del if you have the load right like this do you understand or not and this, yes, is, your, this is your original l so here what is your original l a b because we know neutral axis does not extend because summation of compression and tension is zero there up to this is clear yes sir yes sir all right sir okay so okay if you understand up to this keep it aside now if you consider o a b and b c d are similar triangle from these two similar triangle we can say that now forget about epsilon e we can say that we can say that cd by ab have a look cd by ab equals to y by this row that means o this row you can say row a or sorry row b ob do you understand hello yes sir yes sir do you understand or not so from these two similar triangle we can come to the conclusion of this that cd by ab equals to y by rho up to this is clear
Yes, sir. Response, otherwise, I'm not sure that you are getting this. This is the situation. This is your row. This is your. Uh, you can consider this is. What is called? This is Y. So this is B point, right? So this is D point. So this distance is Y. This distance is zero. So this is A. This is C. So you can see that CD by AB, right? And Y by rho. Now it's understandable for you. From similar triangle, it. Hello. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Or are yes, you sir. Sleeping? Clear, sir. Okay. So now, from this basic, since we know that CD, it looks like the elongation and AB looks like the original length. So, in that point of sense or in that point of view, we can say that this equals to epsilon E. So, in another way, we can also say epsilon E equals to Y by rho. You understand that now? Please response. If you understand, say yes. If you do not understand any particular point, you can tell me. Sir, this one I do not understand. Okay. So now here you can see, if you use the okay, Hooke's sir. law, so we know the Hooke's law that epsilon E equals to what? Sigma by? Sorry, sigma e by equals E. To sigma by epsilon E. So sigma by epsilon now we can say that e equals to sigma by young modulus of elastic sigma by e right so now we have uh, two yes, equations sir. now we have two equations of epsilon e so we can say that this equals to that now we can say this equals to this can we say that like that yes sir it's a very simple one okay so on that point of view we can consider sigma equals to y by rho into e okay so if you consider this is the flexural stress due to the flexural stress it is happening we call it sigma b this sigma equals to sigma uh, b f b is also similar so what is the formula y by rho into e so we know that E is a constant value, right? And for a curvature, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For a curvature, rho is also constant value, right? For this curvature, yes, sir. Rho is constant. So E is constant. Rho is constant. Now, which value controls the F B or the flexural stress? Which value controls it? Yes, sir. Y. Why y. Sir? So if I increase Y, what is the situation? <laughs> Mm. Stress also increase. Very good. This is, you should take nanoseconds to answer this. So if I increase y, the flexural stress also increase. If I decrease, mm. decrease. Flexural stress decrease. So this is the proof of one situation that okay. Uh, this is the relationship between the y fiber between the flexural stress. So that will help us to draw the diagram so let me explain you the drawing of diagram later i will come to the moment because our main intention is to what Re make the relationship between the moment and the flexural stress so now we got the relationship of fiber distance and the stress so if you consider this is a this is a beam suppose so this is your neutral axis so now, if you want to draw the stress diagram, what will be the scenario? If y is more, flexural stress is more, so when will be the y maximum? Here or here? Do you understand? What is the y? Yes, sir. The distance between the distance between from the distance from the neutral axis. 
Do you understand? So, if you consider C and D, it might be here, it might be here, it might be here, it might be extreme axis also, right? Extreme fiber also. Similarly, it might be here, it might be here, it might be here, it might be here, anywhere. Do you understand? Not above this. It might be in the topmost layer. So, this all distance are Y. It's up to you which distance you are considering. Because you know the distance of this beam is H. Right? Are you getting the concept? This is the cross section of beam. So, if you consider Y is here. So, you will get one value. You consider Y is here, Y is here, here. Similarly, if you consider Y is here, Y is here, Y is here and Y is topmost. It will be similar. So, as you go, as you increase the value of Y, what is the situation? The value of forces is also increasing. Hello? Value of stresses is also increasing because rho and yes, Q will be constant. So, can I say, can I draw the diagram like that? Right, so the stress diagram or flexor stress diagram for rectangular shape would be like that. Why? Because if you consider the y, so this is the stress. If you consider this is the y, this is the stress. If you consider this is the y, this is the stress. Right, so as you are increasing the y, stress is Some. increasing. Right, similarly, as you increase the y, stress is increasing. So that is the maximum flexor stress point. While y equals to h by 2. Up to now is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, why, where is the neutral uh, flexor list is 0? The neutral axis. Okay. So, now they are retaining the same statement that I am explaining right now. So, which means that the stress is proportional to the distance y from the neutral axis. So, we can say that sigma fb is proportional to the y. So, what is the proportional constant here? E by rho. Right? So, that means what? If you increase the value of y, stress is increasing. Is it clear now? I'm not getting your response properly. I don't know. Either are you yes, sir, yes, sir. lecture or not? Okay. So till now we get the relationship between the locations from the neutral axis to the stress. Still we need to develop the Sir, I have a question. Yes. Sir here uh, BD and uh, CD is equal or not? BD and CD. Y equal? CD is the elongated portion they considered. If you have a yes, if you have a member like this, suppose this is the location of your C. Sir, I understand about the CD, sir. Sir, I ask you, CD or BD is equal or not? No, the no, distance, no. sir. No, why, why equal? Because Y can be any, any, any fiber. Y can be any fiber on this beam. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we'll try to develop the relationship between the uh, moment and the stress. So, you already got the idea, right? So, this is the situation and we know this is the same amount of compression uh, will be here in the same amount of tension. The tension and compression are equal. So, either you consider the compression zone calculation or tension zone calculation, it doesn't matter, right? It matters only the y distance. If you consider this, the y distance is suppose 100 centimeter from this neutral axis. So, what is the amount of compression you get here? So, same amount of tension you will get here. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So, that's why either you consider the compression zone calculation or tension zone calculation, it doesn't matter. 
because in the assumption you consider the modulus of elasticity for tension and compression are equal okay so that's why you are getting the uniform diagram uh, uh, not uniform similar pattern okay so considering a differentiate area of da suppose you are considering this area and you see this area this uh, dotted hatchet area da distance from y so y so suppose if I consider the area is little bit larger, I really is trouble on this mouse. I hate this online class now. Okay, so if we consider this is total is the area. Okay. So what will be the distance of y because you have a little bit of cross section here. So now it's the confusion that sir which one will be my area uh, distance of y this one or this one which one. So from neutral axis. From neutral axis okay. is okay this is a neutral axis but you find this is the area. So since it is the area. So it might be considered the distance of this point or this point. Which point you will consider? Uh, from the neutral axis, uh, the upper, yeah. upper portion, sir. Upper portion. So that is the situation you must consider here. You should consider the CG point. This is the area. So for this area, you have a CG point. So you should consider the CG distance. So actual Y should be this. Do you understand? Because whatever the area you are considering, the total amount of load will pass through this point. Right? So that's why load acting point is this. And our Y would be this. It is clear now? So it's a matter of discussion in the math solution, but I'm discussing in the theory part. So it will make you easy understanding on the math part. Yes, sir. So Y is clear, right? okay so now consider this is the uh, area da at the distance y from neutral axis the force acting over the area so we know what is the force so we know the formula sigma equals to force over area so what would be the f f equals to what sigma into a right you understand or not? Yes, sir. Okay. I understand. So this is very basic even. Okay. So now this is your F. Right? This is your F. And what is your sigma? F B. And what is your area? D A. So this is the small portion you considered. But if you consider the whole portion, whole compression June. Do you understand? So what will be the situation? You can do the integration of this. Right? Hello? Uh, yes, sir. You can do the integration of this. Okay? So I, I this way you can take the whole portion. So I'll come back to this area later or this integration portion later. Do you understand the concept? So now if you consider df equals to sigma or fb into da so here you find this fb equals to y into e by rho do you understand this one actually you can write fb also hmm? so if you replace this value here so you get this okay and finally you get e by rho as a constant into y into da up to this is clear no response do you understand or not yes sir okay so now if you want to take moment 
the resultant of all the elements movement at neutral axis so with respect to neutral axis if you want to take movement so what will be the situation you can consider right moment would be df into y moment would be df into y right do you understand yes, sir. so you will find yes, sir. m equals to df is the force and y is the distance right yes sir okay so basically this force is only for this particular area this is a small area da but we want to calculate the moment for this whole area okay so simply i just can integrate this so if i consider the integration of y df so it would be look like that and you know the value of df here so df equals to this so if you replace this value here you get y into this situation finally you get e by rho integration of y square da so who can understand or who can remember that what is the value of y square da from basic mechanics what do we call it we call it moment of inertia remember so that moment of inertia very good yes sir so we can replace this integration of y square da as a moment of inertia so finally we get the relationship between this that is m equals to ei by rho right or we can say rho equals to ei by m please this is the strong relationship with the curvature i will look what is the row sir what is i oh moment, moment of inertia man inertia this is you have uh, practice oh. in basic mechanics so this is moment of inertia if it is rectangular you will consider bh cube by 12 for x axis for y axis you will consider uh, what is called hb cube by 12 like this so this is the relationship between the curvature so please keep in mind whenever you will be looking for the design courses this row value will be very important with respect to ei okay so now you can find if you know the value if you want to calculate the value of curvature right or if you want to calculate the deflection so you need this value so ei by m we call it or if you know the curvature you can calculate the moment so m equals to ei by rho so to make it more further because in this course we are not going to use the curvature directly we have an intention to make the relationship between the what flexural stress and moment so that's why we will overcome this curvature equations uh, situation now so if you consider rho equals to ei by m or we can also say rho equals to ey by fb from the beginning here yeah. from these equations you can say that rho equals to y by e into fb can you write it hmm hello yeah. okay so we can write it here so we are replacing the row value with the known values okay so now we replace ey by fb instead of row from this equation okay so now we get a new relationship so ultimately we want this one so if we separate this one you will get it because this e and this e will be cancelled so you get fb equals to my by i so that is the relationship between the flexural stress and the moment okay so now when fb is maximum so as we know that when you get the maximum y so when you get the maximum y while y equals to h by 2 right so that time this value of h by 2 we consider c if it is the maximum situation so that's why 
for the maximum stress calculation we call it mc over i up to this is clear yes sir yes sir okay so if you understand up to this so it's good enough to solve this problem so now if i give any kinds of beam and any kinds of load on u beam right it is udl or uvl whatever it is if i say to find the uh, what is called locations after these locations and if i say in the beam near a fiber wherever i send i just say you can find out this fb okay so now you should capable of finding this fb for a given problem like you did sfd bmd so any beam i can give you and i can tell you okay you, you tell me the value of fb if you understand the theory you must or you uh, capable of finding this FB. Do you understand that? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So, here you can see sometimes you will find shortcut. So, I am not going to show you the shortcut maybe today or maybe not here exactly but I will give you the idea. So, some people will say this mc over i like this so you can convert this i by c prime or c because this all are these two are physical properties because i if you consider rectangular area which is like bh cube by 12 right and for c what is the value of c h by 2 right do you understand or not yes sir so, h by 2. So, if you consider uh, divided by h by 2, so if you consider the multiplication of h by 2, uh, it would be what? 2 by h. Do you understand or not? You just reverse. Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. So, that time, you get it 6, you get it 2. So, this I by C for the rectangular area is what? B BH2 by C. BH is square by C. So, this value they call it S. That is called the section modulus. It's up to you. You can use the section modulus or you can directly use this regular, active, uh, regular practice. It's up to you. Do you understand? So, th sometimes they call it FB max equals to M by C. So, this is usually applied when they want to calculate the maximum stress or the extreme fiber or just this fiber right edge fiber stress so there are some examples of calculating as so you don't have to do this but you can practice it right to finding this section modulus you can practice or you can directly use i by c it's up to you no issue you understand so this is just a shortcut so you can use this mc over i which is equals to m by s so if you are comfortable using this one you can use this if you are comfortable okay so please review this one whatever you take note so i'll give you a 10 minutes break after that we'll do some uh, problem on it okay so we already developed this equation right we already developed this equation sigma equals to my by i so forget yes, about sir. now compression and tension okay if it is compression that is we consider the uh, what is called negative if it is positive that is we consider the tension so you don't have to worry about these things right now okay so, as a simple example, if you consider determine the maximum bending stress. So, bending stress and flexural stress are same, right? Do you understand that? So, what do you need to do? You need yes, to calculate sir. the FB or sometimes they call it what? Only sigma. It's up to you. So, in beam AB, so here is a beam AB is given. One is the pin support and is the roller support. Shown in a figure and draw the stress distribution. So, and after that you have to 
draw the you need to draw the stress distribution over the cross section at this location okay so usually where you have the loading point so if they do not mention that which location of the beam you need to find the uh, moment and draw the stress you will consider the maximum moment stress point so where will be the maximum moment the location it is applied the load so first of all what you need to do you need to draw the moment diagram so from the moment diagram we can find the moment so what is the formula fb equals to my by i so you need moment you need y you need i then you can draw right so if they say to draw the stress diagram so it's up to you so you can consider y equals to zero here so you'll find this fb equals to zero you can consider y equals to uh, 50 right you can consider y equals to 100 these three values you can say or you can consider uh, 20 20 uh, 25 50 75 100 because this is 200 this is 200 so from the neutral axis from the neutral axis it would be how much 100 maximum 100 right okay so I calculation of this kind of rectangular I is a very easy VH cube by 12 right and now the challenge is Y so Y can be calculated and how do you calculate the M so you can draw the moment diagram or you can take a section if you want to take the section if you want to calculate the moment for this point up to you right so first of all what you need to do you have to draw the sorry you have to find out the reactions so you calculate the reactions RB equals to 20 and you calculate the reactions r equals to 30 okay so now you can easily if you would like to draw the sfd and bmd you can draw no problem so you can draw this is uh, sfd and this is the bmd according to our lectures it should be like that you remember our lecture hmm? so you don't have to follow this one Yes, sir. This is the straight line. This is the inclined line. So, as we discuss, as if we yes, consider sir. that way, right, you can follow this one. No problem. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Moment would be same. How? Have a look. This is 30 and this is 2. So, this would be 60. So, what is their maximum moment they find here? 60. Right? you got the maximum moment so where did you get the maximum moment in these locations so to calculate this maximum moment you have other options as well you can take a section here All right i'm not going to discuss this one because i already explained in last classes so maximum moment is 60 kilonewton occurred at the two meter from at point a so where is this location is two meter from point a okay Yes. Now you can calculate the I. I is BH cube by 12. So you know the B and H. So you can see this is your B60, H is 200 mm. Hmm? So you can convert into millimeter to meter. It's up to you. Either you can convert this kilonewton meter into millimeter or you can convert this millimeter to meter. It's up to you. So now you can see F, they convert into millimeter. Uh, sorry, sigma. And moment moment is 60 kilonewton so they convert divided by this one so this is a millimeter to the power 4 so ultimately what you are getting Sigma equals to M Y by I so M is moment so it would be they convert into kilonewton to Newton right then they convert meter uh, millimeter sorry meter to millimeter so it is in kilometer uh, sorry newton millimeter and what is the distance of y why is why unit also in millimeter so in the top you get millimeter. what hello in top unit is millimeter yes, square. Sir. in the top is millimeter is square because this is newton millimeter and y is millimeter and what is i i is millimeter to the power four 
right? So if we cancel this millimeter square, yes, this millimeter four, it would be millimeter square. So so that is Newton per millimeter square, right? So this is the stress area. Do you understand? Newton per millimeter square. Mm. Hello. All right, sir. Okay. So you find this is 150 where here. So either you consider the compression zone or tension zone, you will get the same amount of stress. So if you consider the 150 Newton per meter square in compression, this value is here. If you consider the tension, this value is here. Right? So now question is that why this line is straight line or linear line? Linear line because if you consider the increment of y, I mean, look, the equation looks like it first degree, right? M Y by I. So if you increase the Y, it increases. So it would be look like that. Right? So each point, if you connect, it will be look like this. Do you understand? Similarly here. Right? So now, if I say the same problem, if I say that tell me the value of sigma right or bending stress while y is suppose 50 mm away from the neutral axis please try to understand if i say while you have to consider the fiber which is 50 mm away from the neutral axis so suppose this distance is that time 50 so that would be your y here you consider your y is how much? Hmm? 100. 50, sir. Here you consider your y is 100. You understand? Hello? Because this is the maximum locations. So if I say that, okay, you calculate the y at 20 millimeter away, right? So instead of 100 it would be 50 20 this like this way or I can say in different way also just need to find the I need to change the value of y okay so this is one kind of change do you understand so if I wish I can also change in another way so here they did not mention any locations that where you need to find out the bending moment right or where you to find out the maximum stress because we know this is the location where we have the maximum moment. So on that particular locations, we'll try to calculate the maximum bending stress. Okay. So if I say I'm not bothered about the maximum stress, I said, tell me the moment or sorry, tell me the flexural stress in the edge of a beam while it is one meter away from the point A. I said, tell me the flexural stress on the beam, one meter away from the point A. So that time you have to consider the moment of this location instead of these locations. Do you understand that change, what I am talking? This. So moment. you calculate the 60 here from this location because this is the top uh, maximum moment. But if I specify, because they did not specify, they said just find the maximum. So as we just find out the maximum moment location, because moment maximum is stress maximum, right? What? Because you can see that. F equals to M Y by I. So if M is also increase, stress also increase, Y increase, stress also increase. So here you need to define two locations, moment locations and the Y locations. So they did not mention any locations of the moment. But they want to know the maximum. So that's why you consider the maximum moment. But if I say that I want to know 1 meter away from the point A. So that time you have to calculate the moment of this 1 meter away. So either again you can take the cross section here. Or you can find out the, uh, find out the moment from the diagram. It's up to you. So if I say like that, the calculation moment would be how much here? This is the linear. You can consider the similar triangle. So you can consider this value is unknown. Maybe X, Y, Z, whatever you like to say. 
so these values are known right you know this value 1 meter this value from here to here is 2 meter right this value is 60 so you can develop the similar triangle formula from similar triangle formula you can find this x might be 30 do you understand this is one option another options you can take the cross section so once you get the moment again you just replace it and again you have to follow the y if i say maximum on that locations you consider y is 100 if i say y 50 meter sorry 50 mm away from the neutral axis you consider the y is that y okay if you understand one example other all the examples are similar right they just did it for the udl now the challenge is making the moment diagram you see that's why i said chapter 4 where you have learned drawing the acceptance bmd is very important similar things here you just need to draw the acceptance bmd and if you once you get the moment you will just apply in the formula nothing change okay all the examples are similar so again they are looking for the maximum so they did not specify any location so what do you need to do first of all you have to find out the maximum bending moment locations right then they said uh, you have to also draw the stress distribution for this section do you understand the problem you have to find out the sigma yes, max sir. right so where you have to find they did not specify but they specify where it is the maximum so since they specify maximum one so that means we have to look, go to the location of maximum moment okay so you you find this reactions and this so i'm not going to explain it because it is the last chapter things so once you get the r oh sorry once you get the r a and r b you can draw the sfd and bmd right so as you can see that where is the shear force is zero probably these locations right the drawing is little bit this detection it should be start from here this location is this location okay so where is the share uh, share force is zero you have a high chance to get the moment maximum over there so if you draw the diagram you will get the moment is maximum here so they found the maximum moment is 120 okay so as i said you don't have to follow this diagram you can follow the diagram we follow all right are you getting the concept yes sir okay so for this one you will get the diagram like this right and like this so this is the maximum location 120 you'll get it so or you can take the cross section here okay so this part is done i'm not going to waste so three meter is the distance where you are getting the maximum moment and what is the maximum moment is 120 kilonewton right now yes sir have a, you need to calculate the what can we calculate the maximum what is called sigma okay which is my by i which is my by i so here you can see that for these one where is the centroid you need to calculate because this is no more rectangular only this is what it looks like t so as usual you need to use the basic of basic mechanics you need to find out the centroid probably this is the centroid of this combined section so i hope you know how to find out the cg of combined section so actually what is the figure this is the height of this wave is 150 right and the height of this flange is 50 and the width of this flange is 150 uh, 175 and width of the wave is 50 only so from this you have to find out the cg point combined cg so they consider this is the combined cg they found it okay so here you can see that they found from the base it is 150 oh no 
from the base this is the yb and this is ya so you need to calculate this so this is the calculation i hope you know this can you do this calculation of this yb and ya yes sir okay so we just consider the area you know summation of area into ya so you just find out the total area of these and these and divide by the total area you will get the ya so and on the similar way if you get the ya you can easily calculate the yb by reduction of this so once you get this cg point distance okay so you get ya is how much 71.5 sorry 71.15 and yb you get once you know this distance other distance you can calculate because you know the total list okay so then you can find out ya and yb so once you get it you know the neutral axis locations so from the neutral axis locations which locations uh, moment stress you want to calculate you will get the value of y exactly so once you get it so you know now what moment you know moment which is 120 and now you can get the IB. So, what would be your IB? So, IB you should be again go for the combined situation. Right? Do you understand? Which you consider sometimes I prime. So, usually you have IB for this one and IB for this one separately. Right? So, this is for this one, this center point and this is for this center point. But what would be the IB for combined center point here? So, please go through this one. So you, once you get this IB, what is the formula you have? MY by I. Right? So Y, you can get it right now because you already did it. So to calculate this IB, you can do the combined. Okay. So now have a look. Above, above is compression. Above the neutral axis is the compression zone, right? So that's why they just put the minus. That's it, nothing else and be tension okay so have a look my by i so what is the maximum hmm my 17.1 have a look what is this maximum from this one to age of the section which is 71.5 right this is the above what is the below this is 128.85 so in the case of below, this is 128.85. Okay. <clears throat> so if you consider here minus, it would be plus. If you consider according to the axis, this is plus above x-axis, this is minus remain. So this is the compression zone, this is the tension zone. So finally, you can draw the diagram. So in case of compression zone, you find minus 151.73. So this is the location of minus 150.73. And this is the location of this is 274 point this and you draw this 